are here this evening. I come here feeling anxiety and apprehension, for we have a $3.1 billion budget deficit that looms and in many ways obfuscates so much that we would like to accomplish in this state. If we do not balance that budget in the next six weeks, we have to make a number of payments in a semi-annual basis for which we will be three to perhaps three and a half billion dollars short. We have four billion dollars less in our available cash in this state than we had a year ago. And that is because from July 1st, 2008 to April 1st, 2009, we went from a $5 billion budget deficit to having to reduce $21 billion of debt. Our deficit quadrupled. That is the highest escalation of a budget deficit endured by a state in the history of our country. And although we were able to balance that budget this year, its gap has reopened again. And we are going to need everyone's cooperation and understanding to recognize that if we don't make the tough decisions now, we may face the problems that other states see as a reality. 25 of the 50 states have laid off or furloughed workers. 23 of the 50 states have abolished all their early childhood education and pre-kindergarten programs. Nine other states have conducted early release programs, letting prisoners back into society because they can't afford to keep them. The latest state to miss its payment was Pennsylvania, who has now delayed payments to schools, local governments, to not-for-profits, and even their state workforce. In the state of Michigan, with a 17% unemployment rate, they have now closed 90% of their libraries. The state of Arizona has stole off its state properties. They sold their own capital. That might not be a bad idea. <laughs> but they did it to save their own budgets. And the state of California, with a triple B credit rating, one level above junk bond status, borrowed $9 billion six weeks ago to balance their budget, and because of the high credit that they have to pay, the high interest payments, they are already back $1 billion in debt. So we are having some very difficult times. We're going to have some very hard times. But those who are in the women's suffrage unit, in the women's suffrage struggle. Those who were in the civil rights struggle and those who fought for the rights of children know that there are difficult times, there are good times, and there are bad times, but it's always a good time for justice. And so the reason of purpose and the reason for being for the Empire State Pride Agenda is to fulfill the dreams of those gay and lesbian and bisexual and tri transgendered advocates, both the living and the dead, who have struggled unremittingly and courageously over the last hundred years to build a viable national movement that would create economic, political, and social justice for us all. And bringing people who are gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender into the leadership of government, of politics, of business, of labor, of economic development and education, of healthcare delivery, and even in our faith-based institutions are the only ways that we can have true justice. Those are our principles, those are our goals, and we will never stray from them not until every single barrier in this society is relinquished in favor of true equality for every American.